This week I played around with making a big pile of colourful spaghetti. Hey everybody, my name is Steve and welcome to the fifth devlog for Project Hestia, a base building automation strategy game that I've been working on in my spare time. First of all I want to say a big thank you to the people that have watched and subscribed to my videos. I didn't think I'd get this many subscribers so soon so I'm very happy about that and it's really nice to see all the feedback and comments that people have been leaving. Um, I do read all the comments and I want to put as much of the people's feedback into the game as possible. So one thing I did have is that somebody suggested making the foundation snap to 0.5. So I put that in the game and it does make it a lot nicer actually. So that's really good. And I'm trying to make these videos a bit longer as well as that was another piece of feedback that I had. So if you have any ideas then please leave them in the comments and I'll try and incorporate them if possible. The majority of my week was spent creating paths for the conveyors to go on. So as you can see here, I've created a little test scene that I can play around with mechanics and not have to worry about world generation. So I've got all my different machines that are there. And I've created these two little test paths. So these are, if I jump into the scene, these are created from, I have to close that. So if I go to path settings and go to the scene. So I've got a little shape here that is in a scriptable object that contains the shape data. So this is like this point here, then this point here as a set of vectors. And this is then extruded into the shape of the paths. So as you can see, I've got a box mesh that's the default there. And then when I hit play, these are then turned into the paths. So it looks a bit dull there, but if I create this one here, then you can see that I've got like a a little edge there. So these are actually 3D meshes that I'm generating in the code. And I've played around with a couple of little shaders as well. So I've got a nice little shader for the preview path. So you can see whenever I draw a line, it has this nice dotted, dotted effect. And then I can set a curve to it like this by just dragging. So it works on Bezier curves. So I set a, a initial point, then set a control point, and then that gives me the curves. And if I wanted a straight line, I can just double click. And it's quite fun to play around with because then you can start writing things like, obviously, do, 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 do. This is. Yeah, you get the idea. Right, my name is always fun in computer games. Do, do, do. I'm going way into this. Right, I need to stop. There we go. The shader that I created for the material actually has a few different settings. So this is all created using um, shader graph. And I've added some nice settings so they can play with how wide the, the dotted lines are, like how much they fade. I've changed the base color and whether the inside is how opacity, how opaque that is, how transparent it is. Um, then we've got the dash spacing and the dash width. So that allows me to play around with how it looks a little bit. And I've got a similar one for the conveyors. So if I go onto the conveyor material, so I can change what color the bars are. I can change what color the belts are. I can change what color the belts are there. Make it really ugly. And again, we have like for how wide the actual belt itself is. So it's quite nice. After that, I started working on the attachment system. So this is how we'll be connecting conveyor belts to machines. So on the assembler here, for example, we've now got an attachment authoring, which says, which allows me to specify where the in and out attachments go. And in the scene view, We've got like a little debug view that you can see say, showing which direction they're going in and what type they are. And then in the actual in-game view, they'll be shown up. So I'm trying to play around with what they'll look like. But for now, we've got little arrows that say which direction things go into the buildings. And you'll be able to connect conveyors to these and then connect those conveyors to other buildings. 
Um, so just putting in the beginnings of the system now to show where they go. And the last thing that I wanted to show off this week is that we now have material processing. So we get our little miner and put it on the mining patch. And now if I click on it, I get this little screen that shows that it's mining copper. So I can close that and I can put one on the iron patch and one on the coal patch. And you see the iron's coming in there and coal is coming in there. So at the moment, this only generates it into its local inventory but you can see it's got like a, a little arrow which i've just noticed is the wrong way around we've got like a little arrow that comes out and so you'll be able to then put your foundation on put your uh little assembler on oh, yep those don't rotate with the building so that's a bug so you can then do that and you can then start connecting them with conveyor belts so slowly getting the systems in place and that's about it for this week uh, thanks for watching and if you enjoyed this video please like it and subscribe and i will see you next week hopefully